That's right, Carter. Praise him, baby. If they ain't gonna praise him, you show them. Praise the Lord. Hey, Carter. Hebrews chapter 2. I didn't say you. Start at the beginning, verse 1. Tony tells me all the time I need to shut up. Because I always tell that old devil, you don't know who you're messing with. You're going to be sorry because I'm going to have more anointing when I come out of this battle. I find myself in some slippery slopes. But I have also found that Jesus Christ will never leave me. He'll never forsake me. No matter how bad it hurts. No matter how scared I might get. If I'm willing to walk on, he's willing to walk with me. Praise the Lord tonight. Why you got that light in my face? I'm not trying to video. That's not so bright, Kay. Smile, you ain't got a camera. There you go. It's well, now it's off. I'm just trying. It's off now. It went off now. I know. I'll let you know. Kay got her one of them their smartphones. Okay. Let me, let me to the pros. I'll leave it to the pros. It does work. The flash works. If I can see, I'll read this. You want me read? All right, everybody. Y'all got it? Yes. Will you please stand for the reading of the word of the Lord if you're able? If you're not able, God knows it. Hebrews chapter 2. Starting at verse 1. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense and reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? You can be seated. I want to preach to you a little bit tonight on how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation. Now everybody knows, for by grace you're saved by faith, and that's not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. You got this thing presented to you. The gift of salvation. You can accept it. When you get this offering, it can either be accepted or rejected. When you accept it, you receive it. You believe on it. You rely upon it. The results are salvation. He said, whosoever will, let him come to me. Thank God there ain't no rule book. And thank God folks ain't got no hell to put me in. It's all between me and my sweet Savior. My Redeemer. Hallelujah. You can reject it. That's a conscience and a deliberate refusal to accept the gift that God's given them to us. John chapter 5 verse 40 says, You will not come to me that you might have life. You know, there's several people walking around like that this evening. Knowing that they can have a better life right there at the tips of their fingers. But they reject the gift of salvation. I rejected it for so long. I knew it was right there. Right there in my face. I knew that God was dealing with my heart. But yet I rejected it. I thank God that he put me under enough steady and heavy conviction. Praise the Lord. That I fell on my knees and cried out to him one day. You know that's the problem I think with our loved ones, and I've heard this said before, and it's something that I really totally agree with, is we want to pray salvation upon our children, upon our loved ones, and upon our home and our family members, but then whenever we see them getting in trouble, we want to pray it off of them. A lady messaged me and asked me what I prayed for her son last week. 
I got on my knees and I cried out to God on his behalf. Well, the next day, I guess there was a gang down in Charleston got a hold of him and hurt him pretty good, you know. But he came home. She was wanting him to come home. That was what I prayed. He's home now. You know, sometimes God don't answer prayers in the way that we think he should. One time I prayed about me. I know, son, I always use you. I, I love you. That's why. I said, God, you let every dark thing be revealed. And it weren't just about a month later, maybe, not even that long. He got caught smoking the pot up there at the, his job by the police officer. And I was real mad about it at first. And then it hit me all of a sudden. Well, God, that's an answer to prayer. I said to you, Jesus, let the dark things come to light. <laughs> that's what you're doing. You're fixing it, Jesus. Sometimes we want to pray them out of trouble. And you guess what's going to happen if we keep to, uh, doing that, continue to do it? They're going to continue to reject this great gift. You know, we got to come to a point in our lives, unfortunately, say it, but it's true. Things was real bad for me before I came to the Lord. When life is good, we don't feel like we need Jesus, do we? Amen, Bev, that's truth. Amen. Amen. You don't spend hours on your knees in the middle of the night when all is well, do you? When all your bills are paid and your bill is full, why you go to sleep like a king or like a queen? Imagine when you got a cut off notice on that electric bill and your refrigerator's running a little bit skimpy. Maybe you'll cry out to God. And it's sad, but it's the truth. It's human nature. God knew what we was when he created us. We ain't but dust. That's why we need to be conscious not to neglect. Neglect so great a salvation. Now there's lost people in here that neglect so great a salvation. But there's also safe folk in here that neglect so great a salvation. My Bible tells me, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? That's in verse 3. Neglect is a deliberate act of your own will. Now me and Tony's married. Been so for about 12 years now. You know, I don't have to do nothing for our marriage to fall apart. Absolutely nothing. If I neglect my marriage and just don't talk to him, just don't fool with him, don't let him know nothing that's going on in my life, don't tell him I appreciate him, don't tell him I love him, I'm neglecting my marriage, ain't I? Amen. How many of y'all married to Jesus? How many of y'all neglecting your husband? Your spiritual husband. We can talk about that later. Your spiritual husband. I've been guilty of it. I know if I've been guilty of it, y'all just might as well tell on yourselves. You know it yourself. The Bible don't say great salvation. The Bible says so great salvation. You know, the Word created this world. And everything that we see, everything that we touch, everything that we feel, everything that we have, everything that we are, for in Him we have our moving and our very being. Did you know that our great salvation, it cost the Word Jesus had to come and give his life. Y'all ain't fitting to give your life for nobody. We love each other. We, I love you in Jesus' name. That's the way we do, ain't it? Then if you really get in trouble and you call somebody to come to your house because you need them, well, they go, I don't feel like going. I do it. Sometimes I do it. I know y'all do it too. That ain't love, is it? We humans just got a superficial kind of love. 
we do for each other and for our Savior who gave us so great a salvation. Robbie about died when he's up here telling his kid they got to <coughs> pray through again because that's what God's been telling me. You know, these kids, y'all remember y'all used to stand up and clap your hands and shout and praise the Lord louder than anybody up in this place. What happened? I ain't getting on to you. I'm just asking you to think about it. Why'd you stop? Just because? Just easy to stop, ain't it? Got to press. Sometimes we got to press. That's why they call it pressing. You know, everybody in here needs the gifts that is inside of y'all's little hearts. That's the truth. And I'm going to tell y'all big kids the same thing. Everybody in here needs the gifts that you got locked up inside of you, but you're too busy neglecting your great salvation to share. It's kind of like I got my teddy bear and I'm going home. That's the way we do, man. I got my blessing. I'm ready to go. Amen. Sometime when church holds out for a little while, we got somebody praying for the Holy Ghost or something. I'm just sitting there talking in tongues. I look around and see y'all be rolling your eyes, ready to get up out of here. Yeah, I see that. I do. Shame on you. I got my blessing. Now I'm ready to go home. Maybe if we all get up here and gather around the ones that's praying for the Holy Ghost and pray through with them. Yeah. You know, that's the way they used to do it in the old time ways. The Bible says seek out the old paths. Right. When you find them, you walk there in. Uh -huh. They used to be people get filled with the Holy Ghost all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. It's like a miracle man you see somebody get filled with the Holy Ghost. It ain't God's fault. It ain't God's fault. It's the truth. Yeah, I want the Holy Ghost. Number one, very rarely does anybody come up here and say, I want to pray for the Holy Ghost. There's a few. But unless I ask, ain't nobody coming. If you ain't coming at church, I know you ain't praying for him at home. Do you really want it? Yes. Do you really? Don't tell me. Answer yourself these things. Because it ain't none of my business, really. It's just my business to preach the truth and to give it like God gives it to me. That's right. Amen. Really, what's holding you back? Is the first thing when you wake up in the morning, is the first thing out of your mouth, Lord, I want that Holy Ghost today. You're going to feel me. It was a woman in the Bible. she went before the king because you see she desired some things and that old king he said get out of here now I ain't gonna fool with you I ain't got time today she come back tomorrow she asked him the same as that thing he said I ain't got time for that get up out of here she kept on coming back coming back coming back coming back before the king before finally that king said Okay, woman, you can have your way. Are we that persistent with the Lord? Not just about receiving the Holy Ghost. How many of us got lost children? Lost loved ones. People on drugs. When's the last time y'all fasted a few days for them? I don't mean to step on toes every time I preach, but if that's what God gives me, that's what I got to do. Do we really want to see him saved? Oh, we say we do. More than anything. More than anything. I want to see my children serve the Lord. Then somebody shove a plate full of mashed potatoes and brown gravy in front of you. All of a sudden, oh, you forget all about that. Once again, if I've been guilty of it myself, y'all ain't got a leg to stand on because I know. I know. How bad do you really want? Are you neglecting your great salvation? Now there's some church people 
They'll tell you you can't lose your salvation. But that's not biblical. You see, in the book of Psalms, and also in the book of Revelation, we are told that our names can be blotted out from the book of life. How many of you in here feel like when you were out of fellowship with the Lord? You know if you are or if you ain't. A man knows the condition of his own soul. He knows whether he's ready to meet Jesus or not. How many of you feel like you'd have went to heaven if he's out of fellowship with God? Me neither. I believe I'd have burned in the devil's hell. I don't think that was God's plan for my life. I think that's why he continued to deal with my heart. Continue to show me mercy. And not just me. Every single one of us. Every single one of us in here. And we accept it. Oh Jesus, I come to you, Lord. I give you my all. Take my sins, Jesus. Wash my heart clean. Make it white as snow. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to live for you. And Sunday morning rolls around. It's too early to get up out of bed, man. I don't think I'm going to go. I stubbed my toe this evening. I got to cut my grass. That reminds me of a story in the Bible. There was people, disciples, they wanted to follow after Jesus. They said, we want to follow after you, Jesus. But first... I gotta go bury my dad. I gotta go look at this field. It's for sale. I'm finna get married, Lord, and I gotta make sure I got some property to put my wife and kids. Lord, I got I got a doctor's appointment tomorrow. I got I'll, I'll serve you, but after I do that, I'm gonna tell you, I love some Dr. Phil. Anybody that knows me know I love some Dr. Phil. I got a psychology degree too. I love Dr. Phil. Anyways, one of the best things that he says, if you say a whole paragraph full of stuff, and then all of a sudden you say, but, that erases everything you done said before the but. I love you, but. Come on, how many times you done heard it in your life? I'm going to serve you, but. It's a big word, ain't it? Three letters. But the nips. How bad do you really want it? Every one of us in here. We're living in the last days. I believe everybody knows that and acknowledges it. What if Jesus was to step out on them clouds tonight and say, Come up here. Did you do all that you could? Really all that you could. Now we said, yeah, I witnessed to him. I invited him to church. I let him know. As of lately, I've been sending all my children a Bible verse every day. And y'all just might as well get used to it because I'm going to keep on doing it every day. Whatever God gives me for All my kids. And even my daughter's boyfriend's mother. Because I believe I'm going to see her in church again too. God said he's married to the backslider. You see, it's not just that simple. In our minds, we just think, well, they used to be in church. So I know God can get them back. No, God will get them back. Because he is married to the backslider at heart. Now, I'll tell you what's scary. I've seen him take people's grandchildren out. Y'all think, all oh, that... That's a horrible God that would do something like that. No, that's a merciful God. That baby don't know no sin. That baby's innocent. Right. God will do whatever it takes. I hear people praying that before. Lord, whatever it takes, bring them to the cross. You better be careful praying that. Because I believe that's what we say. And then we just get up and go on our own way. Eating our mashed potatoes and gravy when we ought to be fasting for their souls. 
breathing upon the altar. Non-stop. For the souls of the ones we love. Look, this is serious. This is what I told Tony the other day. Thank you, my cousin. I said, if she's going to go to hell, she's going to do it tripping and fighting and a scratching and a scrawling over my big fat body. I've been seeing her Bible verse every day, too. There's more that we can do. We Now, this is man. This is man. We would tell ourselves, I'm a good Christian. I got a good heart. I go to church every Sunday. I don't miss the service. I shout and clap and sing hallelujah. I pray every morning when I get up out of bed. And I'm doing good. Lie to yourself. Lie to yourself. You're never going to get it. I say you ain't pleasing unto the Lord. Because the Bible says that the man walking in the Spirit, that he pleasing the Lord. But there's always more you can do. And I ain't bragging on bed. Because God, God gives me the strength to do what I've been doing. But ever since the kids started back to school, 4.45 every morning, son. If I if I'm up, I'll poke them out. I gotta wake them kids up at 545. Gotta leave my house at 640. Shell watch me pour out every morning. I drive about 30, 40 minutes, take my kids to school, come home, study my Bible, study my Bible, pray, 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 talk to them. man, I I'm enjoying being by myself so much. I don't know, I don't know what to do with myself. But you know. That's a busy schedule right there on the phone. Saturday, went and preached and sang at a women's retreat. Tuesday evening, went and spoke at a meeting. Tonight, right here preaching. Friday night, preaching a revival. Come on, baby. Come on, you help me preach. And I ain't bragging on bed. But what'd you do this week? For the Lord. I ain't talking about clean house, bleached everything in the cabinet, because I ain't got that far yet. But I've done some preaching, I've done some teaching, and I had some annoying, I attended me some church services. And guess what? I'm still praying for God to open more doors. I was asking them about that prison up her last night. That I, at the meeting, I was asking them about it. They said they go to Alderson. They used to go to Alderson, but they don't got nobody to go there. I said, ta-da! Even Tony, he said, I hope God will give you room in your schedule to fit all these things he has so far. Y'all know I'm not lying. Now, don't you? That's good preaching, And y'all know I'm telling the truth. But yet, when Sunday morning rolls around, we don't want to get up out of bed on account it's too early. We've all done it. Well, I ain't. I'm not allowed to because I'm the pastor. I've got to be here whether anybody else is here or not. But have we all done it? I'm running late and the kids are driving me crazy. I ain't going. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Have we done it? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Understand this tonight. When you are reborn of the Lord, <coughs> flesh can't give birth to spirit. It takes spirit to give birth to spirit. Right. And the only way anybody can ever understand that is if they truly had an experience with the Lord for themselves. You see, I was raised in church, but I never really knew Jesus for myself until I was almost 33 years old. Never knew him. I knew about him. I knew his name. But I never really met him. And once I did, what nobody in this world going to fix it to tell me. He ain't real. He can't save. He can't heal. He can't deliver. Because I experienced it for myself. Amen. Now you go on and lie. I tell yourself you're a good person. Let me tell you what Jesus said. 
Number one, in the book of Jeremiah, he says this. Anybody got no good heart? He said, the heart is deceitful and wicked above all things. And who can know it but God? You don't know what kind of heart you got. If it was anything good in it, Jesus would have had to come down and hung on the cross and suffered and died the way he did. Now, I ain't putting none of us down. But I'm going to tell you one thing. The most important thing you can do in your walk with the Lord is to stay humble. I don't care what kind of woman. I don't care what kind of ministry. I don't care what kind of miracles. You don't matter. You better stay humble. You better stay humble. I am nothing without Jesus. It's like when Robbie said, I can't preach. I said, I can't either. <laughs> Not until the preacher comes. I, I ain't a preacher. He lives in me, though. He take up residence, praise God, in my soul when I asked him to come. Now let's hear Romans chapter 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. No matter what you do, if you are not a blood bought, born again, save soul. I don't care if you cut your neighbor's grass. Make them a chicken casserole every Friday and take it over to them. Go feed the homeless. Give money to all the hungry people. I don't care what you do. You, you cannot please God if you ain't his children. Right. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. I didn't say Jesus said. Amen. It ain't happening. You can't make God smile if you ain't his child. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You know what that means? That means Jesus is going to look you in your eyes one day and say these words. Depart from me. You workers of iniquity. I don't even know who you are. Those are some weighty words to think about, ain't they? And we eat them mashed potatoes and gravy like they ain't going to be none tomorrow. God's really been dealing with me a lot lately about seeking after him for souls. Those of us in here that are saved, we might be the only key to somebody else's salvation, but we're lazy. We're lazy. He's not right. He's not right. Y'all quit paying attention to him and pay attention to the message. He's all right. He just lives. He gonna run around. He's okay. He ain't going nowhere. Say praise the Lord. Carter. Say praise the Lord. Yeah. I don't know what I'm saying, man. Don't say that. We neglect such a great gift that's been given to us freely. You ain't do nothing to deserve that mercy. I've had people to tell me before. You must really be something in the kingdom of God because look how he spared your life. Death didn't come to me because I carried life inside of me to bring to other people. And guess what? So do you. If you know him tonight, so do you. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? The Bible says in Proverbs 18 and 24, a man that had friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Yeah. It's times like these when the doctors is trying to speak cancer over my body. I got peace. I ain't, I ain't call you panicking when I got home, did I, Shelly? You know why? I ain't scared... God's got this. And I believe I'm going to see my grandson preach. And that means I'm going to be around for a while. I'm 
seeing it now, ain't a baby. God's got a plan. He is the friend that's sticking closer than a brother. He is the anchor that holds us when our sails is torn and the storm is raging all around us and the waves in the sea are crashing and we feel like surely we're going to die. But yet we neglect him. You know, i got some friends in my life and I really do appreciate these friends because with a busy life, it's hard to keep in touch with somebody every single day, every single day. What are you doing today? I love you. I got some friends, I can go six months and not speak to them. Then we pick back up, it's right where we left off. Like we never skipped a step. I appreciate friends like that because they're rare. But it ain't like that with Jesus. We really got to talk to him. We really got to walk with him, y'all. We really got to fast and pray for our lost children if we want to see them saved and living right before hell comes upon them. And you know what? I believe if you saved and sanctified and dignified and the old man is dead and yet you neglect to pray them babies in, I believe you'll answer for it. I believe we'll all answer for it. Now, I ain't telling you you're going to go to hell. But I believe you're going to lose some rewards. They're going to burn up. You had this anointing on you to pray. You had a main line. You had a main Hello, Jesus. Jesus on the main line. You got it. You got it. If he lives in your heart, then you got it. But you, you don't ask him to save you. Save your lost loved one. Bring him out, Jesus. Maybe a prayer before dinner. Lord, thank you for this food. Let it be a nourishment to our bodies. Lord, bless those that made the food, God. Touch us, Lord, as we fellowship together. And Lord, save our lost loved ones. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Y'all think that's good enough? I don't either. Listen, some people be like, the eclipse was not nothing from the Lord, but I don't believe that. I really feel like it was the sign. In seven years, we're fitting to have another one. I believe that the tribulations are at hand. I believe time is running out. I believe we're knocking on the door of things we ain't never seen before. And the Bible tells me that the days will be shortened for the elect's sake. I don't know about y'all, but I'm the elect. I'm chosen. I'm going to be here. Y'all are too. It's time to really buckle down and get serious about the Lord. And kids, don't y'all be afraid. And them kids at school, they say in bad words, don't you be scared to tell them. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you and he don't want you to talk to them. It hurts Jesus' heart when he hears you say them bad words. Don't you be afraid to tell him. We got to speak it up. And we got to let the world know the kingdom of God is at hand. The days are short. <coughs> Luke chapter 12, verse 4. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. Don't be afraid of your boss. He can fire you from your job. But God can give you another one. Don't be afraid of your neighbor. They're going to look at you like you're some kind of a Jesus freak. That's what you should be. What can man do to you? I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast you into hell. Friends, understand tonight, hell is a real place. It ain't no made-up story out of the book. It's a real place. And there's people there right now. And everybody want to take this great gift of salvation like it's a joke. People don't want to take the Word of God seriously. People don't want to take their souls seriously. People think that if they go out 
and they aspire to be wonderful husbands or wonderful wives or wonderful mothers and they have good jobs and they earn money and they do things for their family and they bring things into their household and they take care of their loved ones. They think they're accomplishing something. But I always did tell my kids, you could be the president of the United States and if you didn't have Jesus in your heart, it wouldn't make a hill of beans to me. I want to see my children serving the Lord. Greater love had no man than you. And he laid down his life for his friends. And we can't even take two hours out of our day to pray and seek after God for our lost children, for our lost brothers, for our lost sisters and mothers and daughters and sons. We will lay down our life for nobody. We can't even lay down the mashed potatoes and gravy. Mom, 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 Disciple. What's that mean? Discipline. <coughs> we got to strive for it. If we really want to see God move in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in our communities, in our churches, we really got to step up our game. Everybody stand if you will.